Okay. Grajo. Ooh, I really like this background. I just saw this as an option and I decided to use it. So I'm a fan. This might be my new favorite background. Hello, Sleepy Lab. Hello, Magnus Enigma. Also, Ricardo. What's up, LP Kirby? Yeah, this looks good, right? This is, this is nice and cozy. Hello, Steve. Also, Fast Tracks. I face this line so often, and now the move is to go here. Hello, Do the Crane. Also, Beans Toast. We got a lot of regulars in the chat. Cheers, everyone. Yep, H3. And now we're going to swing over here. Idea to damage their pawns. Try to inflict some strategic damage on them. Thank you, Mr. Stat. I had to bring back the classic flannel. It actually seems to fit with this theme really well. You might notice. Okay, bishop e3. Now, at this point, I could pull the trigger on the capture, but it's not necessary yet, I would say. Uh, I might want to go a6 first. Yeah, let's play this. Try to build up to knight c6 when white can't play a piece to b5. So if you guys want to get this theme for your own Lee chess, what you do is right here under, uh, not board theme, background. There's, a, there's an option called picture, and it's these like screensaver type things. You can choose whichever one you like. I just selected this one, this house kind of glowing on the horizon. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. That, that means, uh, like, doing donuts, basically. Iron truck. Like, doing donuts in the snow. <laughs> yeah, the, the Winnipeg, Minnesota dinner jacket. That's correct. <laughs> All right, so they play d4. So I think the idea with this is to try to get the bishop back here. So I'm going to take at this point. going well Ronnie yeah making steady progress probably going to work on it tonight a little bit okay we get the trade now question do I play e6 do I go knight d7 a lot of different options I mean I think e6 is fine keep my options open if d5 I can avoid a trade I can play e5 yeah I don't want to open this so we're just going to go here now maybe white will attempt to get rid of their pawns but i still think even if i were to allow a trade on e5 there's going to be some lingering weakness in the white position okay let's play knight bd7 so classic scandinavian battle white has the two bishops but black has the more solid compact position especially with these these pawn weaknesses but again i think white's going to go for f4 so we'll see we'll see ultimately how this turns out thank you jada jow for the 35 months Okay, this comes to mind. Bishop d6 comes to mind. I think I'm going to go bishop d6. If knight e4, I'm probably going to ignore it. Uh, likely castle. I'm okay with playing, playing with two knights. Yeah, let's castle. Thanks again, Jiao to Jiao. 35 months. Cheers, cheers. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is an interesting position. I could see this one going both ways in terms of the eval. Uh, again, I like the fact that, you know, I'm pretty weakness free, but I got to respect the bishop pair. We need to give the bishop pair their due. And white's getting ready to create some sort of problems here. I'm thinking I might just tuck my king in the corner. Yeah, I think start with this move. If rook b3, then play king a8. Maybe get rook c8 in at some point. Yeah, because this is a threat now, so I think it's prudent to step here. I mean, if queens were on the board, like if white had a queen sitting on e2 and they could line up bishop takes a6, that would be a completely different story. But here, I think I'm marshalling enough defenses. Rook c8, hit the bishop. Knight c5 coming. I could see myself taking over this game pretty soon. Thank you, Mojo Rider. That's very kind of you to say. 
glad it's useful. Okay, knight c5, there is rook b6. There is rook to b6. You can go rook d8 at that point. Hmm. Maybe that's okay. Maybe I induce b4 and then play knight a4. Ooh, I like the look of that. I'm going to try to play that way. And they take, okay. That, I think, is a weak decision because now I take with the rook. This is under attack. This feels very shaky for white. If they go c4, I can think about playing b5. Like, suddenly this pawn looks pretty lonely. I also have the built-in doubling. Maybe get my knight into the mix. Okay, so, yeah, I think question here, do I go for b5? Or do I try to just massage this strategically? Like, knight h5, knight h4. Sleepy Lab gifting a sub to Mojo Rider. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Sleepy. Looking up Mojo. Yeah, this move's really natural because it threatens knight takes d5, but I do think white's just going to sidestep. So I'd say it's between this move and this move here. Th this feels like the principled move. This feels like the move that you want to play. So I'm definitely gravitating towards it. Maybe rook c3. Hmm... If rook a3, I think I can go king b7. That should be okay. Yeah, let's play it. It, it feels correct, so I'm going to go for it. Yeah, this is my new favorite theme, guys. I think I'm going to stick with this one for a while. This background. I feel like I'm in a more chill version of Starry Night or something. All right, b3. <clears throat> So if I take on c4, will white take with the pawn or the bishop? Unclear. Could play b4, but the rook is not trapped. Ah, maybe I, maybe I maneuver my knight. I'm close to ensnaring that rook, so yeah, let's maneuver. I'm thinking if I can work up to this, that would be great. Need a fire burning on that background with the shirt. Yeah, I should put it back there, right? Like somewhere by the chessboard. That would work well. Really complete the ensemble. Okay, King B1. So is there anything preventing me from doing this? Probably just A3, A takes B4, but when I take it, can I go for a fork? So B4, Rook A4, A5, threat Knight B6. I mean, I think white's only real move there is a3. So then knight b6, a takes b4, knight takes a4, b takes c5, knight c3 check, key move at the end. And do I take, I could even take the bishop at that point. I probably don't even, yeah, I wouldn't go after the rook, I'd probably go after the bishop. I like it. I don't see anything wrong with this. So when you don't see anything wrong with an, an effective looking operation, you go with it. So yeah, this rook is getting squeezed, and I think white's going to have to come up with something creative to keep this game going. It's very important I play this first. Don't jump the gun and allow the capture. Now, a crucial aspect to this is the fork on c3 that I get. If that didn't exist, this wouldn't be nearly as clear. Right, because they'd be taking, you know, even if I take with the knight, I think I would really like that position, but is it winning yet? Probably not. I, I still have a lot of work to do. That being said, I mean, white could take here. I probably should have examined this. And then, uh, white probably will take there. And then I'll move the rook back. No, they don't. Okay, so we get the check in. We'll look at that after the game. Because I think that was crucial. Let's see where this king goes. Like, if king b2, I might have taken the rook just to keep things clean and then take. But I think in this case, I'd probably take the bishop. Unless I'm fearful of this. But I have check. I want to stop those pawns from connecting. 
Mm, that could actually be kind of annoying. Maybe I should take the rook. Now I'm changing my mind. The reason why I'm thinking rook takes might be correct is if it prompts white to recapture and I can take this pawn, that's a big relief. Or if it prompts white to play c6 check and I step up and then they take, I've got everything blockaded there. And I feel like I can, I don't know, get my rook active and eventually win some of these pawns. This is not a trivial decision. Like take, take, I mean, king b6 maybe. Maybe I just go for the blockade. King d3, is there any chance that they can get in? Knight d4, king e4, king c5, king takes e5, rook e8 check. Okay, now I'm leaning towards taking the bishop again because I think I can neutralize this thing with this king b6 move. Yeah, let's go for that. So I'm reverting to the original move because I think I can prevent the pawn from reaching c5 successfully. However, if that was not the case, I might have preferred rook, uh, knight takes d1. Hello, penguin monkey. If this goes on YouTube, just know that I'm talking to the Twitch audience right now. I'm sure <laughs> many of you figured that out, but just so you know, I'm not talking to imaginary people. Is e5 not hanging if you win f3? Well, I probably won't even go after f3, actually. I'm going to play this king b6 move. Yeah, I'm going to go here. I'm going to leave this in reserve because I just want to stop this. And let's see what white does here. <laughs> John Smith says, hello, YouTube, just in case. Yeah, I always wonder if I should have the chat on screen, on screen if I'm doing this on YouTube as well. That always gets very mixed reviews. I think when I used to stream on YouTube way back in the day, I'm talking like five, six years ago, I had the chat up as I streamed and a lot of people found that distracting. Or at least they said so. Okay, so rookie one, probably give a check and then maybe this move, king c5. Let's give the check because I think I'm almost certainly going to play it. We'll see where white steps. Might also fortify, like maybe f6. Maybe take this pawn. Depends where white goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, king c3, I think that's logical. Hmm. So I'm just trying to calm this position down and win this pawn. I mean, I see I could go knight f5. Rook takes e5, knight takes d6. Still a little annoying, though, because of king d4 with c5. Pretty close to consolidating. I think this move feels correct. King c5. But again, rook takes e5. I don't like the prospect of this rook getting to e7. Okay, then there's f f6 as well. f6, I think f4 should be played. Trying to undermine... I'm also noticing I might have something like this, king c5 and rook b8, going after b3. So let me think about this again. So if, if, I, if I play king c5, thank you, don't move, by the way, for the 17 months. Appreciate it. Hey, John, this is Guy. Don't have a ton of time here, so I'll have to come up with something pretty quick. Yeah, it's like just tricky enough to give me some issues converting. And again, there's also knight takes f3, but what do I do after rook e3 there? I'm not sure. And let's not spend too much time.
King C5 or take C5. Ah, annoying. I can't figure out a great move there. Rook B8, D7. Rook B8, D7. Rook takes B3, King D2. I even have Knight takes F3, but I don't think that does much. F6, F4, King C5. Okay, I'm going to play F6. I'm really not sure about this, but I got to make a move. I'm going to try to open the F file and see if that helps. Yep, that move's expected. I mean, maybe I just play Knight F5. Maybe that's the way to go. Still feels unsatisfactory, but at this point, again, I got to make a decision. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go here. I don't like it, though. I got to say. Maybe I play g6 here. Let's do that. I'm trying to harvest these pawns, of course. Great time management, John. Always great to see. Uh, oh, tricky. Okay, I should go here. I should go there, I think. Check. Maybe here. Guard this square. Ah, oh, they can push, though. Oh. This is nasty. <laughs> like, every tactic is working for white. Okay, this is going to get weird now. <laughs> Every tactic working for white. You guys know that feeling. I took there was C6. Amazing. I probably shouldn't be that amazed. I mean, they literally have three connected pawns, so. Now they're maybe debating if they're going to go here or C6. I do have a good knight, though. The knight is helping a lot. So we'll see what we can do. They could definitely blunder. They could for sure blunder a fork somehow. We're just going to chill for a few moves. Like, blunder this, please. Or this. Or this. You see, there's many ways white can blunder this. Now, if I move my rook, they can play d8 is the problem. And then when I take, they play rook d7. So, yeah, I got to do something creative. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it. Just pre-move. This might have to be like the Immortal pre-move game. This would be really impressive if I did this with 1.7 seconds, though. Never say never. Oh. 
No, I did it again. <laughs> I did it again. Extreme dirt. <laughs> Is this the immortal pre-move game? I just posted about the other one. I thought I would never top that. I got to go back and watch the replay. That's the only way. We have to go to the tape. I was down a lot of time in this game towards the end. But the power of the Rook, and especially the Knight, right? Especially the Knight. You always have a chance if you have a Knight on the board. Let that be a lesson to you. I've talked about it time and time again in my videos. It's amazing how often it's true. I even lost the Rook, but we kept the Knight. <laughs> wow, that game was fascinating. I want to analyze it, but we should probably get in another game, but... Hey, maybe this will be on YouTube after all. I think it kind of should be. This was pretty instructive, but I do feel this deserves some analysis too. I'm going to load this up. I'm sure someone ran the analysis already, but we're going to hide that. I thought I was cruising in this one, honestly. Like, I was so proud of having calculated all this. I mean, first of all, should I take the Rook? That's definitely an option. That's definitely an option. Why did I shy away from taking the Rook? I don't think it's because I thought taking the Rook wasn't good. I think I just thought taking the Bishop was better. So maybe that was greedy on my part because, you know, if I knew I could get this position, I can win this in my sleep with White just having one protected pass pawn. Basically blockade it, get the Rook active. White has too many weak pawns. Something's going to give. They could play c6. This is a better try. But king b6, take. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Like, these pawns, I've got them under wraps. I can start getting my rook in the game. I think black's going to win this. I was vaguely worried about this move, but that, I think, is kind of lazy on my part because looking at this again, I mean, there's no possible way this is going to work. Probably this wins for me somehow. I just have to tame these pawns. The knight is on a pretty bad square, though. The easiest thing might actually just be to go here. Just play king e6 and try to do what I did in the game, which is approach the pawns via the c5 square and not allow white to go c5. And just say, yeah, take the knight, whatever. Yeah, you can advance this pawn, but I think I should have done this in hindsight. Knight takes e2 might still be winning. This might still be good, but I think in, in hindsight, this is much more clear. Knight takes d1. So let's see. Yeah, that's the case. Pretty big difference, too. I mean, knight takes e2. Yeah, it's still better for black. But that's, that's enough of an unclear situation where, yeah, I think what I just analyzed there is, is correct. Knight takes d1, and this is minus 3. Yeah, it likes king c7 better. Maybe just to show the technique. Yeah, like this. We'll just play like the top engine moves. Get the rook out. Because white can't really make any progress if they're not able to successfully push b4, c5. And just keep this blockaded. Okay, maybe they go bishop d3. But somehow my rook is going to get in. I think it's just a matter of time before they lose a pawn. Yeah, like I don't know, bishop here. Probably play this first. They're just waiting or something. And go harvest the H-pawn. Maybe wheel back and eventually take this too. Guess they can put up some, some resistance for a while. Feels like probably they're going to be in Zugzwang somewhere. Yeah, like now they block their bishop. White runs out of moves. Yeah, so this is a, a good illustration of deciding between tempting moves. Like, yes, in a vacuum, knight takes e2 is the correct move material-wise. But in the circumstance, knight takes d1 is much more clear, and it tames this pawn mass much more. I mean, I don't even know if it's actually correct to say knight takes e2 is better material-wise, because we saw white takes this one, and I wasn't able to win that pawn back. 
Okay, so still though, it is better for black, but how should I play it? King c5, says knight f4 might be better. Interesting, knight f4, oh, so I can allow c5? Rook b8, no way I'm finding that move. Rook b8, rook a8, the best move. Wow. That's unnatural. I guess the idea is to go here, and then your rook isn't blocked in this way. Yeah, I mean, this looks scary. That's not a easy idea to come up with. And I guess white's tied down to this pawn, and maybe I slowly win their pawn somehow. Yeah, rook b8, rook b5, it's saying. <laughs> to go attack this laterally. That's, that's pretty hard to see. Okay, I, king b6, I can't fault myself much for playing that. Yeah, and I started burning a ton of time here, and I went, went astray. Knight f4, knight d4. Yep, this is correct by white. And it, it's equal here. I spent all this time, over two minutes of my remaining three and a half minutes, didn't come up with anything good. F4. These games can be very frustrating, because again, it, it feels like things just kind of fell into place for white. Like, they happen to have F4 here. But that's the reality. And you could just as easily say things fell into place for me with that tactic working in the first place. But yeah, if they don't have F4 here to break this open, this is an easy win for black, I think. Maybe white can rustle something up with rook a1 in some case, but I have ways I can neutralize their pawns. Also this. Why not knight takes f3? So knight takes f3. I think I didn't like rook e3. Hit the knight. And again, I'm going to lose this pawn. Engine suggesting some line like this, where I hit the rook and try to guard e7. But when they eliminate the e5 pawn, the king can step up to d4, and that can help out the c5 move. So I'm really risking that. Yeah, it looks like white has just enough here to keep this, keep this balanced. They can get three connected pawns, even if I eliminate the foremost d pawn, the furthest advanced d pawn. I have a three versus two on this wing, but that's not enough to win, apparently. Really complicated. I won't go through all the complexities here. This would take a while to analyze. Feel free to check this game out. But I, I did want to check that key circumstance because it's so important to, once you gain the advantage, figure out the cleanest way to win. And I really failed here. It's funny because knight takes d1 was my original intention. But then I saw I could take the bishop and I was like, why not? I have this move king c5. I can stop these three pawns from connecting, right? But it was not that easy at all. It was very difficult because of the weakness of this and the leverage of f4, opening the e-file. Yeah, here I should have taken the pawn. I was trying not to allow rook e7, though. I didn't want to allow this move. Engine says I can actually do that. And I have an edge here, apparently. But I was really pushing the envelope. I had 28 seconds at this point. King c5. Why did I not play king c5? I thought d7. Then to go, I go knight d6. Ah, uh, yeah. I saw white was threatening rook c6 mate in this line. So I don't have time to do this and this. But I guess I'm still holding on with this move. Only move. So I played rook d8, and now apparently white is winning if they play b4. Pawn b4. Makes sense? Yeah, because it facilitates the c5 idea. Take, and if I take on d6 one way or the other, this pawn's coming. So what did white play? White played uh, pawn d7, check. Yeah, and king b7, I thought I was being cute with this. I thought, I'm going to guard the a6 square so white can't swing the rook around and take this pawn. And I'm also preventing white from going here or here to guard their d-pawn. Saw immediately afterwards that white can play c5 here. Another move that just seems to fall into place. <laughs> but I should have seen it. And if I take c6, forks the king and the rook. Yeah, and now I'm losing. Once white gets this 
like half diamond, three quarter diamond in, this is losing. Because I'm, I'm pretty stuck at this point. You can tell this opponent, someone wrote in the chat in, or in the comments in the last video, you can tell that my opponent in that game was an honest person. Same thing here. They really didn't try any dirty pre-moves. 